technology screens and I'm gonna show you something a little quick trick we learned on how to dry projection screens even faster so man my windows are fogging up rising up I don't know what's going on outside but anyway so uh this is how we dry a 180 inch screen or 200 inch screen or 150 inch screen and once you get to like 100 inch 120 they pretty much are easy going to dry on their own but when you get to a screen size of 150 and up this is a screen that's going to require a uh, interesting way how to dry it so this is how we dry a 180 inch screen in no time at all now when you basically apply those coatings to the surfaces the primer we have for instance not the actual color of the screen other color screens will be much darker than this it should match that wall over there when you coat the surface what's going to happen is keep in mind the paint is going to seep through and this is why we advise you that if you're going to be doing this on your own these are pre-coated that we're going to be selling on our website the pre-coat is going to be a little different they're going to have a special coating attached to them they're going to be a little bit more advanced and like i said with some people that are going to be using the our screen paint the black widow to design their own um if you have the room if you have the time to paint it this is for people who don't have the time and don't have the room but if you do have the room you have the time to paint it this is the fast way on how to dry a 180 inch screen and i guarantee you bar none that no one else is going to show you this but us so you see that fan right there what's going to happen is when you paint your screen keep in mind the the uh paint is going to drench right through the screen and it's going to hit the surface which we that's why we tell you at the end of the day make sure you have a giant drop cloth out there or plastic because what's going to happen is that paint's going to seep right through. It's going to hit your floor. It's going to hit your driveway. Or whatever you're going to have it, it's going to seep right through. So your screen's going to be saturated on the top and the bottom at the same time. So what you want to do is you want to basically give the screen the ability to dry. Uh, not, you don't have to worry about evenly. But you want to make sure the screen dries faster. It's going to have a hard time drying if just the top part is drying. But the bottom part is still going to be saturated and soaking wet. And that's going to take time for that air to travel from the top and then seep down right to the bottom to dry the bottom area. What we're doing here is we're allowing the screen to actually have airflow from the top to the bottom. So by just taking an everyday box fan, right, make sure you got it uh, supported in because this screen will take it with it. Take a piece of string and you tie it to the end of the grommet. So what's going to happen is now air is going to flow under the screen, drying the other under half of it and drying the top half of it at the same time. As you see that one part at the far end, that's still sticking a little bit, that means the air hasn't traveled all the way over. As the air starts to push through, you will notice your screen will start to lift up and get this wave effect. And this will allow the screen to dry at the bottom and the top at the same time at a faster rate. If you try to do this without the fan, you need the fan laying flat. You don't do this little method right here. It's going to dry. It's just going to take a long time. It's going to take a long time. for The top's going to dry fast. But it's going to take time for that air to travel down and get underneath the screen, which is going to be moist because of all the uh, paint that's seeped through that's on the, uh, the uh, surface that you have below. But this allows it to dry a little faster. Now, for me, I just have to use one for 180 inch. 200 inch, probably just one fan and one half fan to dry the top and the bottom. If we do anything bigger, we'll put one on each side, knock it out that fast, and we're done. That's a quick trick on how to do it, on how to get it done faster. Now that air is flowing through. By the time it reaches that far end, way over there, and that pulls up and it starts to flap a little bit, then we know it's fully dry. That's how you do it. I told you, go to the sites. They don't teach you this stuff. We, like I said, I, I've gone and gotten research on how to dry a screen. We get the same old stuff. They throw a couple fans on top of it. The only problem is the fan is going to be drying the top layer, but mind you, underneath of it, it's still going to be wet, still going to be saturated. Especially if it's laying against a plastic surface to protect the floor, that's going to be saturated. By by doing it this way, you get the bottom and the top dried at the same time. And it's much, much faster. Look at it, almost dry. You're watching it dry right in front of you. Now this right here you're watching is the primer. We made, we made our own primer. I told you before that if we're going to be doing like a bunch of these screens at the end of the day, putting two applications, it's going to be too much work. So this is the primer. This is not the actual coating. The actual coating is over there. You see how black that wall is right there? That's what the screen should look like. This is a dark gray uh, primer we developed. And no, we will not be selling it. Just I'm sorry, but it's not for sale. Basically, this is for us to be able to apply the surface to the screen one time and be done. Usually, I would have to put two coats on here if I'm using anything else. But this new stuff we have now, one application, we're done. Hit it again, and that's it. 
just came off my Facebook page. They're asking for 200 inches. Come on, people. We've got 180 inch. At one point, we we're going to stop at 150, and that was going to be the end of it. But we got a 180 now. If a 200 inch, we are going to try a 200 inch. If a 200 inch does, and it should, because 180 inch was easy to do. We thought we were going to have to fold 180 inch. Even with a fold, we can still do it. We can easily probably do a 200 inch. So I'm going about to order in a few minutes. I'm going to go get me a 200 inch, and I'm going to get me another 180 inch, because now I'm thinking, like, my floor is 150 inches. This is 180 inch. I want a 180 inch floor display now. And I'm about to change out the floor too. So we might just jack it up now. So we're not gonna be painting inside this summer. I'm actually building me a huge massive frame that will fold in half and have table legs attached to it. Everything will fold within itself so we can take it outside and coat the entire screen. Oh, don't worry about that. Nothing's gonna fall over. This will be actually underneath my deck and part of my kitchen extension and we're going to have uh netting around it so nothing will damage it and because the screen's going to have legs on it the frame's going to have legs it's going to lift the screen off the ground which is going to allow airflow to go under the screen much like we're doing here and it's going to allow dust and stuff won't kick up on the screen because it'll be off the concrete so i'm already building the blueprints for designing that mechanism so we can use that for painting screens outside and this is a quick and fast way to do it now i've done this before with the big 180 inch, you'll see that in the link of the Star Wars screen we have outside. We've done that with that screen right there, drying it that way. So this time we didn't share, we didn't give any information on how we dried the screen. This time around, so you know what, let me do a video, show them how to dry the screen even faster. Maybe to help you out along the way if you're basically deciding you're going to do it yourself. Look how fast that's drying. Because this is what it took forever. If we didn't do this little trick right here, it took forever. This is going to be a monster. This is going to be a big, big screen. And again, I can't express this enough. Yeah, this is the heat coming from... That's an interesting reaction. Oh, I guess it is. I caught outside. Look at my windows. Cross it up. And like I said, out on top of this, while we are doing this, we are going to be disgusted. I understand a few of you don't like it. If you don't like it, then guess what? I'm sorry to be rude here, but you need to kick rocks at the end of the day. If it bothers you, for me, and I, I can tell who the naysayers are that aren't here watching at the end of the day, if it offends you at the end of the day that we're bringing up the whole two-court thing, then guess what? Go kick rocks, because guess what? At the end of the day, make sure the information is correct on the website, and a person should know what they're talking about. If this offends you that we're coming down on somebody because they should know this from the door, then we know that you are a full supporter of this nonsense and you need to go because we don't tolerate nonsense here on this channel. We keep it real on this channel. Anyone who's painting projection screens should know exactly how much paint it takes to do a screen. This is 180 inch. Again, if you had experience in painting big screens, much like 180 inches, automatically from the door, you'd have known it taking a gallon. Automatically. This took a gallon to knock out. We're going to have a little experiment with the screen. Now, I'm curious if the 48 ounce could cover this out of curiosity. And we're going with a gallon. But we're curious because we had a customer painting a 150 inch screen motorized and he had half a quart left over. He showed us half a quart. He said, wow, good coverage. I got a half a quart left over. He might have been able to knock over a 180 inch screen with that. So we don't know. But I'm curious to see if it's possible. So we're going to do as many 48 ounces. We're going to see what happens. If it doesn't, we just go over top of it with one gallon, which is what we advise you to do anyway. But we want to see what happens. I'm curious because I've done 48. I've done 140, 150 inch screens from 48 and still had paint left over. So I'm curious to see exactly if we could do it. But we still strongly go with one gallon just in case. Then you want to have touch ups. Mine, this is going to be a screen. These are outside. These are not going to be for indoors. This is an outdoor screen. If you get any wrinkles or anything on the screen, pretty easy. Flip it over on the opposite side. Take an iron or warm settings, go over top of it, then you're done. Once you string it up outside, when the heat hits it, when the rain hits it, it's pretty much going to flatten out on its own. We got one sitting out there right now in the snow. So you're going to be good to go. Now, we're also going to add in a brick of lead lights with it. All kits will come with bricks of lead lights. These are all going to be weatherproof. So you can take them outside. 
Don't worry about the rain. It's not going to damage. And I got quite a few outside. I'm going to be setting the lights for this one right here. Once we put the frame in, I got to get online. I got to start ordering my lights over here too, because we need a lot of lights for this one. The bigger the screen, the more bricks you're going to get, because we know you're going to need them. We can't give you like one set of bricks for something this big. You're going to need two two bricks of lights. We're talking about bricks. We're not talking about when you get LED lights. You usually get like one reel. Some give you two reels. These come with four. That's a brick. Bricks come in boxes like this. That's why I call them bricks. But as we're getting back to the whole two quart thing. Look at the screen. 180 inch screen. Look at the size of it. Look at the size of my wall. That's a 180 inch screen. You calculate and do the math from there. That's why I said when I sat there and said on camera that some people at the end of the day when they're talking on camera do not know what they're talking about when it comes to screen paint products. Just because they got a set up with a projector and speed, it doesn't mean they know anything at the end of the day. Anybody can do that. They don't know what they're talking about. And they will make mistakes and you will find these mistakes. But it's one thing if you make a mistake and you go and you clean it up. Not make a mistake and then add more to it. Like, hey, look, we got a house on fire over there. Let's dump gasoline on it and see if it puts it out that kind of theory the whole theory of saying that three screens let me show you how, how dumb this sounds we're gonna break down the map we've done that already three 100 inch screens will equal up to a 100 inch screen so how would you be adding your screens up if it's a 200 inch screen is that two 200 inch screens if a 300 inch screen is it two three 300 inch screen if it's four is it four four 100 inch screens so what happens if you come across a screen that's 150 or 180 or 178 or 115 113 what happens then what happens if you come into 110 129 127 126 do you know what those screens are those are screens measured by an aspect ratio of 1610 so when you see 1610 on your projector that is for a customized screen see the screen right here this screen is 129 1610 that's the customized so when you hit screens at those particular odd numbers, those numbers will range in aspect ratio of six of 1610. Then you get into 235.1, 239.1, and they got some other crazy ones above that. So how would you measure that out if you're doing screens by a calculation of by saying that three 100 inches equivalents to a 300 inch screen? So you only can stick to screen sizes of sizes of even numbers. Because that's the only way that would work. Because if you run into a screen that has an odd number attached to it, how would you add that in there? They don't make a 30-inch screen. So if you're doing a 150-inch screen, you say, well, it takes 120-inch and 130-inch screen. If you paint that, that equivalents to a 150-inch screen. Again, Mickey Mouse math. You have to know exactly how much it takes, and you have to have experience, which at the end of the day shows a person like me or anybody else at the end of the day you're not an experienced painter. You don't know what you're talking about. You don't know exactly how much paint it takes to go in to make a large screen because you never did one. Anyone who's ever painted a large screen would automatically know one gallon. So like I said, you know, people say, well, this is not, this, yeah, this is going to mess someone up. The other half of business customers you're dealing with, as I said before, we're, we're working with a church right now and they have a committee. When you have a committee, when you have uh, people that you have to go to to get approval for funding, they want to know exactly how much money this is going to cost at the end of the day to approve the funding for this. You cannot make a mistake in there. You have to have exact measurements on what has to be done. You can't go back in that environment and say, hey, look, um, our measurements were off. This was off. That was off. That's not good for them, and that's definitely not going to be good for the person who's providing the, um, the, um, the information on the product. On top of that, you run the risk of messing somebody up that may have a banquet or an event. These are big screens, 180 inches and up, they're massive screens. 300 inch screens are massive screens. This is not something someone's gonna have in a home. When I get somebody that says they're gonna do a 200 screen, my goodness, where are you putting this thing at? What's this for? It's gotta be for outdoors. Oh yes, for an outdoor backyard event, we're gonna have a wedding, we're gonna have a birthday party, whatever, so and so and so. The chances are people are gonna have a screen that big is gonna have an amazing projector for number one. They're gonna have uh, sound equipment, they're gonna bring in uh, they got to bring in a screen big enough to you know how, how much money it costs to have a, a frame to fit a screen. This is 180, mind you, 300. To fit this frame right here, to fit it up, set it up the whole nine yards. They may have a crew come in that may do all the work, stage crew to make up extra money. And they may have a painter, a professional painter come in and paint the screen. 
Now, you know what the professional painter's going to do? He's going to start laughing. He's going to look at the two courts, and he's going to look at the screen, and he's going to rub his head and say, where in the world, who sold you this? Oh, we got this from so-and-so-and-so. -and -so -and -so. Where? Show me where you got this from. This is not going to work. He's going to tell you right there on the spot, this is not going to work. This is not going to work. You're going to need more paint than this. This is not going to work. So what you're going to do as a consumer, you're going to panic. Because usually most people who paint these screens and don't do them a week ago. They don't do them a month ago. They do them usually the next day or on that day they paint the screen because they want the screen to have no wrinkles in it. They want it to be set up right there from the door, freshly done for the event. So now you're sitting up there on the day of the event and you're short a couple quarts of paint to paint the screen in. So what do you do? You panic and you go contact the person who sold you the paint because the painter's going to sit there and tell you right from the door, nope, this is how much you're going to need to paint this screen in right now. With that information, you're going to go back and talk to the person who sold you the product and you're going to already know what it takes to paint that screen, but you're going to ask them to see if they know what they know, what they think they know because they should have never made that mistake to begin with. And if they didn't make that mistake to give it, they were a professional at their field, you would never be on that phone with your heart beating at 100 miles an hour trying to figure out how you're going to fix the mess that you just got yourself into by dealing with somebody that is an unprofessional. And if you can't get that measurement right, you're going to have a problem on your hands. They marry well. Some people can go as far as suing you at the end of the day for basically making a miscalculation like that and costing them time and money. They'll sue you for it. So you have to know what you're talking about. Ah, my goodness. So the church we're working with right now asked us, they got a big screen up there. I seen the projector. How much paint would it take to paint that screen in? That screen's around 200 inches. We're looking at about 200 inches. We know with the technology we got here, we can easily knock that out with a gallon. No problem. A gallon and knock it out. They've already done a gallon already. They asked us to make sure we knew what we were talking about. They said, yeah, yeah, about a gallon. We used a gallon base to paint the screen the first time. Yeah, I know. Because we've done 200 in this training before. Now, if that was the other individual, he'd have sat there and said two quarts. Because he doesn't even know how much quart, how much paint goes into paint a 300-inch screen. How would you even know how much goes into a 200-inch? Well, we said one quart. I hope he would have said one quart. I don't even know how that would work. So what happens if 300 inches go into two, two quarts go into a 300-inch? How many go into a 250 inch? How many go into a 400 inch, 500 inch, 600 inch, 1000? Don't know. That's when you see the testimony of the church showing off that thousand inch screen. We know how much paint it takes to paint a thousand inch screen because we've done it already. Look at why we're having this conversation, the screen's drawing. That's why I tell you, you got to be careful about people putting Mickey Mouse nonsense on their websites, not having any experience in. How many 180-inch screens have you seen them paint in? Precisely. There you go. How many 80-inch screens you seen displayed on his property? There you go. How much experience does he have in multiple different brands of projectors? Again, none. Same ultra short throw. Same Epson 720p projector, nothing new. You're talking about venue projectors. You don't know anything about venue projectors at the end of the day. You don't know how to replace them, repair them, parts, nothing at all, period. You don't even know what to look for them. You don't even know. The caliber of lenses that they take, you know nothing about them. I own nothing but majority of venue projectors. And mind you, this is a person at one point even said on camera that venue projectors suck. Are you kidding me? Okay. This is why you don't know anything about them. I mean, when we get done with this screen, when we get done doing the demonstrations in the back, and this is going for companies also too, to explain to you at the end of the day why you do not want to use a 12,000, 10,000, not even 5,000 aluminum projector on a gray and white screen. Again, this is a surface that's going to be generating a ton of white light. This is a surface that has to be used in an ambient light controlled environment. If they're used in well-lit environments like this, they will wash out. Color, contrast, gone. So how in the world are you going to get a gray screen paint to work outside in an area that's going to have 10 times more light than inside? And you're going to hit that with a projector that has a 10,000 lumen. That's more light hitting the screen. That's why, and everybody we talk to basically have used a gray screen paint product or used a white screen, the first thing they say, we can't get the image to pop up because it's constantly washing out. Now, below, like I said, I'm going to put a link 
to a testimony we got from a church. We did a screen over a thousand inches in this demonstration. I might make that. I'm gonna make that my uh, my promo video. But anyway, and you'll see where they hit that screen with a seven thousand lumen projector, and that screen washed completely out. Couldn't get it to pull. And this is old technology we're using. Just about done. Almost done. Pretty soon. Coach, that's going to be done with it. Yeah, people should not be making statements about certain screen sizes or projectors at the end of the day if you don't have any experience of working with these machines or basically working with screen sizes of this caliber. So when it starts to lift up, this is how we know. Two quarts. I've never ever heard anything like that before in my entire life you don't even have to be a professional painter to figure that one out you don't have to be a professional painter you don't have to be an amateur painter the average person who walks into a room is not going to sit there and say hmm i think this living room is going to take two quarts they're always going to say a gallon to be safe they're going to say a gallon even when people are doing bathrooms they're going to sit there and say a gallon my bathroom's a pretty small size I know for, for it, yeah, there's no way in the world, gallon, two courses would probably knock that out easy. This is a small bathroom. But most people are going to start off with a gallon. Better safe than sorry. Even if they got pain left over, they're still going to say a gallon. And then try to break it down by saying three, oh, come on, Mickey Mouse math, really. Can't call yourself a professional if you don't know how much pain it takes to paint a screen. So we're going to come back in. We got to add that in there. But yeah, um, you're going to hear me mention this quite a bit as we start painting more and more bigger, bigger screens. Because as you see me dropping gallon after gallon after gallon and knocking out these big screens, you're going to be like, oh, yeah. But anybody with basic common sense would know that. Like I said, they're pretty much looking to find people at the end of the day that really don't know anything. You would really, I mean, at the end of the day, consider the fact on those calculations, you would really have to know next to nothing. You have to be near comatose to, to, to think that was a correct calculation at the end of the day. Wow. Mind you people, this is a court. So you can get an idea on how stupid that was. These are courts. That is going to paint all of this. This is 180 inch. And mind you, out there in the back, we have a uh, uh, 250, two quart 250. That's the nickname we call the screen. Because just to show people, and mind you, his naysayers, and I, if you're naysayers and you're supporting this, I really would take a back seat right now, throw a hoodie over top of your head, and just disappear into the darkness. Because if you agree that this is actually correct, Again, Forrest Gump has a higher IQ than you at the end of the day. Anything has a higher IQ than you at the end of the day. Not to be rude, but it's true. You can't, that's, that's really, uh, I'm going to leave that one alone because I'm going to end up saying something I don't want to say on camera. But yeah, you would, you, it, there's no way to explain it. You would basically be in the dumb zone with no problem whatsoever. But if you want a good laugh, hey, go pop over to Home Depot or Lowe's and say, look, I'm going to paint the screen uh, 261 by 147. My professional opinion, I feel two courts would cover this. And watch the onslaught of laughter. Oh, I wish I could be there for that one, too. That'd be funny. That's not going to work. So, mine, this is a 180-inch screen right here. This is 87 inches high by 153 inches wide. That's not going to fit in there. And you're talking about 300-inch screen. And the reason why it comes to this is this calculation, because if you can paint three 100 inch screens, that equals to the same at, oh, I'm going to leave that one alone, equals to the same of a 300 inch screen. This is why anybody going to your website will automatically back down, won't buy a thing from you. Just reading it. And then on top of that, again, specifications are extremely important. I need to be outside today too. People are saying, your pro how do we know your product's weatherproof? Anybody based on to know, how do we know your product's weatherproof? Have your screens been outside all year round? 
Has it been through snow? Has it been through rain? Has it been through sleep? That's one of the plus sides of living in an area where you got season change all the time. Now, I don't know. I don't, I'm curious. I had to think about that. How would, um, well, I guess it would have to have a refrigeration unit to do it. Because I'm thinking, if you live in a state where you don't get snow at all, how would you prove to, if a, if a spring was going to be shipped to an area where, like over here in Philadelphia, we have a lot, we have snow, we have, our, 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 our seasons change up here. How would you be able to convince the, the owner, I mean, the uh, person who's buying the screen, that your product is weatherproof? Because, you know, the harshest conditions you can get in is snow, sleep. All that stuff will basically tear your screen up really quick, rip up the fabric, the material, everything. So how would you convince somebody that your product is weatherproof against harsh, icy conditions if you live in a state that basically is warm all the time? And the only way I can think that companies could do that, they would have to have a facility that will allow them to be able to freeze the screen to be able to pull off those same symptoms that they would have in that environment if a person was living in an area that had a lot of cold, a lot of weather, like Alaska or anywhere up in the Antarctic or somewhere somewhere in Canada, an area where you're going to have constant cold all the time. Well, not they have constant cold all the time, if you know what I mean, but they have, their, their seasons change. So how would that even work if you live in an area that's constantly warm all the time. I mean, we get heat waves up here all the time. So we get, we get everything. We get heat, we get cold, we get everything. So we get a mixture of everything up here. But how would you do that? If you live in a, a warmer state, now mind you, if you're a company, you have access to that kind of equipment to freeze the screen down, to test it. So how would you know? I've never seen any tests of anybody. We're the only ones who had tests of freezing screens. We are almost dry, people. Look at this. Almost dry. Man. I got you know what? I'm gonna have to build me a unit. I have to build me a unit. We can have three fans. Oh man, I got some ideas popping in on how we're gonna build uh the stationary. So we're building I told you we're gonna build a giant frame for outside. It's gonna have legs attached to it so no dust can blow up on the screen. We're gonna hook a section up. We can drop a fan here, a fan here, and a fan here, and we can have connectors that'll connect to the screen to allow it to dry even faster outside. We're about done here. Party to we drop, to we drop. Oh, I can't wait to display Pac-Man off of this screen. Woo! Ah. <sighs> Big screen. And the beautiful thing about it is, I told you, this is our own primer. This is our own dark primer that we made. One coat application and done. This is the only part right here. Yeah, it's sticking because of the floor. There we go. We got full lift off, people. Full lift off. The screen is actually floating off the floor. All right, so we're done talking about that. But this, like I said, cool trick on how to do this. You wouldn't need this for 100 inch or 120 inch. It's going to be unnecessary. If you're doing screens of 150 and on up, you would need to do this at the beginning of the day. But what's going to happen is when you're painting the screen, as I said before, see all that right there? That's all the paint that just seeped through the surface and just hit the uh, surf, the, um, um, the drop cloth we have below. If this was your floor in your house or out in your driveway or in your in your in your garage. You would have messed it up. So what you want to do, as I said before, you get yourself a piece of uh, tarp, put it down. This is if you're doing it yourself. These are pre-coated for our customers. So pre-coated are going to be a little different. They're going to have a special. You see me pull out a paint cannon and coat that screen. We're adding an enhancer to pre-coat it only. But if you're doing this yourself, you got the room. As I said before, you want to make sure you got some plastic below underneath of it because that's going to seep right down into your floor. You don't want that or basically where you're going to be working at. And the reason why you put the fan, because the fan's going to dry it even faster, because underneath here, you're going to have all this moisture. It's going to make it even, it's, it's going to dry, but it's going to take longer. It's because your air is going to be traveling on the top only. It's going to take a while for that air to finally seep down below and dry underneath all that moisture, that plastic. By putting the fan here, it's going to allow air to flow underneath of it, and allow it to dry even faster. Now, if you're doing this outside, I advise you when you lay down your plastic, put bricks 
on each corner because what's going to happen if the wind picks up and it blows that plastic that plastic and dirt underneath the plastic it's going to roll right across your screen it's going to mess your screen up so put bricks on each side when you lay your plastic down outside The reason why you haven't gotten this information from anybody else because no one else has painted 180 inch screen in. That's why. You would notice if you've done a screen size this big. We're going to do a 235.1. We're going to make our own 235.1. Once I get my Singer sewing machine in here, I'm going to actually, I told you, I'm making my own screens. And I don't see 235.1 screens outside like this. I don't see them. So we're going to make our own. So grommets are pretty easy to put in. Right here, usually they put like either what we're going to do, we're going to make our screens a little bit bigger. Then what we're going to do is we're going to fold them inward. We're going to double stitch them all the way around. And then we're going to drop our grommets right in. That way we can make our screens the way we want to make them. Because I want a 235.1 and I can't get a 235.1 because they don't make one. So we'll make them. Yeah, but you got to make sure that when you're buying screen paint, don't be afraid to question people at the end of the day. Like I said, we don't, we're not mentioning names, but you know what I'm talking about. We're not mentioning names. You know what I'm talking about. Isn't that whole nonsense I said with the other one? Four applications? Are you kidding me? You know how long, how big 180 inch screen is? You think I want to put four applications on this? That means I have to go through this four times in a row. No. I'm not doing that. It's too much, too much time. I had a few people contact me on that. They saw that um, demonstration. They were like, oh, heck no. I ain't doing that. That's just too much time. It's too much work. I got to draw this big old line down the screen. I got to, uh, uh, no. Too much work. Let me see if we can get another rope for you. Oh, I forgot. We ain't got the, um, for that side. We don't have it. Now, if you got the handles, I don't have the handle on this one. If you got the handles on both of them, Mine, you just put that, you just hide the same way over here. I don't have the handles on this one right here. If your screen's around like you're doing 200 inches, you put one on each side. Causes a parachute effect. Causes the screen to push up. Dries even faster. All you got to do is just tie on each end of these grommets a fan and that's it. 20 inch box fan, that's all. All right, so what I'm going to do is here is I'm basically going to end the video here. I'm going to come back in because we're almost done. I'm going to go get me a bowl of straw. I haven't even eaten breakfast yet because I'm still working on designing this ultimate frame. We're going to be building outside to be painting these in. We've already posted this over to our Facebook page. Everybody over there is giddy as a schoolgirl with a new dress. They can't wait to set up. They can't wait for summer. Man, you have no idea, people, how fun it is to be outside and watching TV, especially when they look like old eds. And this is not done. This is the primer. That's the actual screen right there. If you notice, it's not matching my screen. It's supposed to be black. This is not black. This is dark gray. I want to do a planetarium so bad. <sighs> all right. Got to go. Thank you all. And God bless.